Yo, what's up? Dr. Swole here, MD Bodybuilder, back with another video. Today I'm going to be giving you a full science-based hypertrophy program based on my four-day hybrid split. This is a unique split that I designed for myself years ago, and it's really underrated for bodybuilding. In fact, you can make an argument for it being the best four-day split. Today I'm going to be sharing a full hypertrophy program set for moderate volume, so it'll be good for an intermediate to an advanced athlete. Let me introduce this split. It's basically a hybrid between the Arnold and push-pull split. Now the Arnold split divides your body into three main days, chest and back, shoulders and arms, and legs. Since you wanna hit every muscle group twice per week, this means you end up training six days per week. The push-pull split divides your body into two days. On push day, you train muscles involved in pushing tight movements, so quads, chest, shoulders, and triceps. And on your pull day, you train muscles involved in pulling movements, including your glutes and hamstrings, back and biceps. Now in my split, we combine the two splits over a four day training program and it divides your body up into two days. On the first day, you do quads, chest, back and calves. And on day two, you have glutes and hamstrings, shoulders, biceps and triceps. Then you repeat later in the week. You can see that we took an element of the Arnold split in that we have our chest back and shoulders and arms pairing for the upper body. And then we take an element of the push pull split where we have the quads and glutes and hamstrings separate and repeated throughout the week. This split has a few unique advantages, especially when it's run four days per week. And we'll talk about this later in the video. Quick outline for today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you a full hypertrophy program set for four days per week with moderate volumes. We'll start off with a program walkthrough, where we go through every element of the program you need to run it, including the exercises, sets, and reps. After that, we'll talk about how to set it up throughout the week, and there is some nuance here that I wanna explain. Lastly, we'll go over the pros and cons of this split as I've laid it out. If you want to see more full science-based hypertrophy programs like this, make sure you like the video, hit subscribe, and let's get into it. All right, let's do our program walkthrough. So this is Dr. Swole's four-day hybrid split, and it's set for moderate volume, which will be well-suited for an intermediate to an advanced athlete. We have day one, day two, day three, and day four. On day one, you train quads, chest, back, and calves. On day two, you train glutes, hamstrings, shoulders, and arms, and then you repeat for day three and day four. These are the exercises, and here are the sets and reps. Down here, I have the total number of sets for each workout, so you have an idea of workout length. And down here, we have our muscle group weekly set volumes. You'll see that this is a moderate volume program, which could work well for an intermediate to an advanced athlete. Starting off with day one, we have bench press for the chest, four sets of five to eight. After that, we have squats for the quads, three sets of five to eight. I'll note that in this program, you'll see that I put my main pressing movement before my leg movement. This isn't really an issue until you're actually moving bigger numbers, but the idea is that if you're really fatigued after your squat or deadlift type movement, you won't perform as well on your pressing movement afterwards. So if you have strength goals in your pressing movements, it might make sense to put those movements first. After this, we have leg press for the quads, three sets of six to 10, and then leg press calf raises, which you can superset on the leg press five sets of eight to 12. After that, we have T-bar rows for the back, four sets of six to 10, followed by reverse lat pull downs, so a supinated grip, three sets of eight to 12. Obviously, you can substitute these exercises as you see fit, but I specifically put a reverse lat pull down here so you get a bit more biceps training. Since this day is separated from your arms day, you can put a little bit more arm focus on these movements if you'd like. Lastly, we have upright rows, which I count for side delts, but they also work the traps, so we'll sneak them in here for some extra side delt training three sets of eight to 12. Moving on to day two, we start off with the barbell overhead press, three sets of five to eight. Then we have deadlifts for the glutes and hamstrings, three sets of five to eight. After that, we have Bulgarian split squats, which I count for the quads and glutes and hamstrings. And I like to do these with a barbell and your back leg elevated on a bench. After that, we have hammer curls for the biceps, three sets of six to 10. Then we have close grip bench press for the triceps, four sets of six to 10. And you can superset your bicep and tricep movements. After that, we have line curls, which are like incline curls, except you lie flat on the bench, three sets of eight to 12. And then we have dumbbell lateral raises for the side delts, four sets of eight to 12. Next up, we have day three. So we start off with incline dumbbell bench press, four sets of eight to 12. And here your incline dumbbell bench is more of an accessory movement. So it may not be necessary to really have to put it in front of your front squats, but you can try things out for yourself. After that, we have front squats, three sets of six to 10 for the quads. Then we have some leg extensions also for the quads, three sets of 10 to 15. And then we have weighted chin-ups for the back, four sets of six to 10. Note that I lump my quad work and then my upper body work together, but it doesn't have to be this way. You can play around with exercise order to see what works best for you. Some people would rather have more rest in between training the same muscle group. Of course, you don't wanna spread out your muscle group training so much so that your muscle gets cold. Okay, then we have cable rows again for the back, three sets of eight to 12, and then upright rows for the side delts, three sets of 10 to 15. Lastly, we have machine calf raises, 
five sets of 10 to 15. Last session is day four, and we start off with Romanian deadlifts for the glutes and hamstrings, three sets of six to 10. And then we have leg curls for the hamstrings, three sets of 10 to 15. Note here that I made our day three and day four leg movements significantly easier than on day one and day two. And I did this expressly because they are back to back. The other thing is I specifically chose movements that won't interfere with each other as much. The front squat doesn't use your posterior chain as much as a back squat. Romanian deadlifts are more or less a pure hip hinge and leg extension and leg curls are basically antagonistic movements. After that, we have easy bar curls for the biceps, three sets of eight to 12, and you can superset these with easy bar skull crushers, three sets of eight to 12. After that, we have preacher curls for the biceps, three sets of 10 to 15. And then we have cable press downs for the triceps, three sets of 10 to 15. Lastly, we have cable lateral raises for the side delts, four sets of 10 to 15. And you can superset these last two cable movements. This program can work really well for beginner type strength programming. If you wanted, you could be squatting and benching twice per week and then hitting deadlifts, overhead presses, and other accessory presses like close grip bench press on this day too. You'll notice that I like training side delts often and I put them here four days per week. And this is just because side delts are a really important muscle group for aesthetics. And the side delts recover really quickly so you can train them often. They also work somewhat as a placeholder where you can move them around to even out your workout lengths. You'll notice that I usually like to have one major horizontal type pressing movement and one major incline pressing movement in order to give some priority to your upper pecs. Okay, now that you've seen the program, let's talk about how to set it up throughout the week. This is my preferred setup. So you start off with day one, then you have rest, day two, rest, day three, day four, and rest. First of all, especially in a split like this where you're actually hitting your legs four times per week, you really want to spread out your days as much as possible throughout the week. As you can see, we've spread out our rest days as much as possible so that you get the most productive performance out of every session. This setup allows us to spread out our major squat and deadlift movements throughout the week. Next, one of the big criticisms of the Arnold split is the fact that you have shoulder training and chest training back to back. So you might end up having two major pushing movements on back-to-back -back days, like bench press and overhead press, for example. But with the way this program is set up, we can put our accessory pressing movements like the overhead press and close grip bench press on this day too. This insulates it from the other pushing movements, which are your other chest movements, which will happen on day one and day three. You'll also see that this setup gives us the maximum amount of rest between our shoulder and arm training. The shoulders and arms get indirectly trained on your chest and back movements. So you're actually training them four times per week in this program. So it's nice to have some rest in between training them. You'll see that this would be trickier to set up for six days per week since you'd be training the same muscle groups so often. Lastly, you'll see that I've set up day one and day two to be significantly harder than day three and day four. And this is to accommodate the fact that day three and day four are going to come back to back. Remember that you want to be maximizing fatigue distribution. That is, you want to spread out your training stress as much as possible throughout the week to really maximize your aggregate performance. The fact that we have a shoulders and arms day also means that we have three days to dedicate to major pressing movements. And this will work really well if you have strength goals. All right, now let's move on to talk about the pros and cons of this hybrid split. First of all, starting with the pros, you get to train your shoulders and arms when they're fresh and with a high frequency. This is the big advantage of using the Arnold type setup where you have chest and back and shoulders and arms separately. In most science-based type programs like upper lower push pull legs and full body, you end up training your shoulders and arms at the end of your workout after your chest and back movements when they're already fatigued. As I mentioned, your shoulders and arms get indirectly worked on your pushing and pulling movements. So if you have them at the end of your workout after those, they will be fatigued and you won't perform as well. Now, why is this a problem? Volume is a major driver of hypertrophy, and you can look at volume as sets times reps times weight lifted. So if you're able to perform better overall on each set, you are going to build more muscle. Now the other thing here is that you get to train your shoulders and arms with a high frequency. As we mentioned, you get to hit them four times per week if you count the indirect training from chest and back. Now I really like these advantages specifically because I think a lot of natural bodybuilders have weak shoulders and arms. So it makes sense to give some priority to them. Now next advantage of my hybrid split is that it's really easy to program in antagonist supersets. An antagonist superset is where you pair two exercises that use opposing muscle groups. For example, a bench press and a row. Since one muscle group is resting while you're training the other muscle group, you're able to save time without costing you performance. And it's really hard to do this, for example, in push-pull legs, where you don't want to be supersetting chest and shoulder movements or back and bicep movements. As you know, I'm a big proponent of efficiency, and if you're able to save time in your training, you'll be able to either put in more volume or just have your training more sustainable so it's easier to stay consistent. One of my big rules for success in life is to first find out how to do things as effectively as possible 
and then find out how to do it as efficiently as possible. Moving on in terms of pros of my hybrid split, you get a high frequency of pressing. In this program, you could easily program in bench press twice per week on day one and day three, and close grip bench press on day two. Pressing is a very skill-based movement, so having higher frequency can be helpful if you have strength goals. Lastly, this split gives you really good fatigue distribution. We mentioned this before where you really want to be spreading out your training stress as evenly as possible throughout the week. The problem with something like a bro split where you have a dedicated arms day and then a dedicated legs day is that your leg day is going to be way harder than your arms day and you might not perform as optimally on all your leg day sets than you would if you spread them out a bit more throughout the week. So the split does a really good job of evening out your stress between workouts because your easier shoulder and arm training is offset by deadlifts, which are basically the toughest movement you're going to do. And this effectively solves one of the cons of the Arnold split, which is suboptimal fatigue distribution since your shoulder and arm day is going to be a lot easier than your leg day. Lastly, let's touch on cons. And the only real disadvantage of this program is that you have back-to-back -back legs. When you spread out your leg training over four days per week, you're inevitably going to have two days back-to-back -back at the end of the week. Now you'll see that we got around this through our exercise selection. You'll see that later in the week on day three and day four. On day three, I put my more pure quad type movement, like front squat. And then on the day four, we put our more pure hip hinge movement, which is an RDL. The RDL really doesn't use the quads much at all, compared to something like a sumo deadlift, which we would put earlier in the week on day two. As you saw, day one and day two have rest days on either side of them. So you can put your quad and hamstring and glute movements there without worrying about them clashing. I'll mention here that people might point out that you have shoulders coming right after chest training on day three and day four. And again, we solve this since this is set up for four days per week. That is, you can put your tough bench press and shoulder pressing movements on day one and day two early in the week. And since those days are spread out by rest days, you'll be fine in terms of fatigue. I think the split's really cool because some of the advantages specifically come from the fact that it's set up for four days per week. Now I will be sharing the full program as an Excel file in my Facebook group. So if you haven't already, find the link to my Facebook group in the description below, join the group and you can download it for free. That's all for now guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like the video and leave me a comment below. I'm really good about answering every single one of my comments, so you'll definitely hear back from me. In particular, have you tried my hybrid split yet? Let me know. If you wanna see the other video I made on my hybrid split, check out this video where I go through a different program which is set for beginners, that is lower volumes, but it has some program tweaks that are different from this one. You'll see that in all my programs, I incorporate some unique training programming style. So by watching these videos, I'm hoping that you'll be able to learn to program for yourself. If you've been getting value from these programs, make sure you subscribe and share my channel with your gym buddies so they can benefit from it too. See you next time.